I'm Matt, and I'm going to be explaining to you today how to mix an UltraTag kit. When you're starting off in nuclear medicine, you may not realize that it's not just injecting people with radiopharmaceuticals. Sometimes we actually have to work with the blood because the blood itself is going to be our radiopharmaceutical. In order to do that, we need to first do a blood draw, and then to get a really good tag, we'll use this UltraTag kit. You'll use these sometimes. Uh, the most common indications are going to be either for a, a MUGA, a gated cardiac study, or you're going to use it for a, a gastric bleed and looking for that. In either of those cases, you, we need to get our technetium tagged onto the red blood cells. And the most efficient way to do that with the best tag is to use an ultra tag kit, which I have right here. And it includes various parts. The first part is this reaction vial. This is where you're actually going to put the blood in first. It has a stannous chloride and tin chloride in there. And those are actually going to diffuse into the red blood cells. And then they're going to be the molecule that holds the technetium in the red blood cell. Of course, there's going to be more of the stannous chloride in here than we're going to have blood cells. And we don't want the technetium to tag to anything that's not a red blood cell. So we have two other syringes, which is our syringe one and our syringe two. Both of these have different chemicals that are going to react with any of the stannous chloride that's not picked up in the blood cell. But they can't actually diffuse into the blood cell. So they're only going to be interacting with the extra stannous chloride to prevent any technetium from tagging onto that. Other supplies in this case is a butterfly. You want to make sure that your needle is a large bore. 19 to 21 would be about the smallest that you want to use because you don't want to damage the red blood cells as they're going through. Gloves, alcohol, your, your other supplies. In this video I'm going to be using the butterfly needle to take it out. If you're having an inpatient they'll probably have an IV already in place and you can use that you just want to make sure that you flush it out first really good and then you need to draw a little bit of blood to waste and just throw that away to make sure you're getting clean blood in there. If you're having an outpatient you also might want to consider using an indwelling catheter because after we take out the blood and process it and get it tagged we're going to have to re-inject it. So instead of sticking them twice it, using an indwelling catheter is also an option. Okay, so for the first part of this, um, obviously I've identified my patient and gone through all that, made, made sure that everything's ready to go on that. It's going to be the blood draw, and once you draw the blood, you need to use a syringe that has a little bit of anticoagulant in it, either ACD or heparin, and with ACD, it's a maximum of 0.15 milliliters per milliliter of blood and heparin, it's recommended 10 to 15, so just a small amount. When you're at your site, your clinical advisor will be able to, to show you how, how exactly they do that with their anticoagulants. Also, if it's an inpatient and you're going up to the floor to do the blood draw, I like to take the reaction vial with me so that as soon as I draw the blood, I can put it into the reaction vial. You need to let it wait for five minutes to give all the stannous ion time to diffuse into the red blood cells. By taking this with you, you can get that five minutes started and it can be diffusing while, while you're taking the elevator back down to the, to the hot lab or whatever. So that way it's just a little more efficient. At this point, nothing is radioactive yet. So it's perfectly fine that you can get the blood, get that started, and then when you get down to the hot lab, your five minutes will be pretty much closer to up and then you'll be able to go ahead with syringe one, syringe two, and the, the actual dose. So I'm going to perform the blood draw here with Alex. Thank you. Get the tourniquet on him and let, let his veins pop up a little bit. He's got a, got a nice couple of veins there for me. alcohol to clean down the whole area and like I said 
an inpatient would have an IV placed already, an outpatient you might want to consider using an indwelling catheter. For this demonstration, I'm just going to use a, a butterfly needle. Have that ready to go. Just give him just a little poke into there, and you can see we're already getting a lot of good blood flow. So I'm going to let that move back. And you'll keep the tourniquet on on this one because you want to be able to have that pressure. And then you're going to pull back and just draw, not really fast, just leave it enough time to pull back until you draw. Typically three cc's is what we draw, it could be anywhere between one and three cc's of blood into this syringe which had a little bit of anticoagulant into it. So there we have his blood there. I'm going to right at the end pop the tourniquet since we don't want that back pressure anymore. Have some gauze ready to go there. You can even ask him to put some pressure on there. Pull out the needle. Sometimes you get a little tip of blood. All you have to do is pull back on the syringe a little bit and then that'll take care of that and you can use whatever safety feature that they have as far as a flip over or a pullback. And at this point, I am just going to immediately put on a needle and inject into this. And also, before I do that, I will give him some Coban. I'm going to lift your arm up there just a little bit. Give him his covance, so and now that's out of the way. Now I will inject immediately into our reaction vial, get that started so that I'm making efficient use of time. And to do that, you take some alcohol, make sure that that is clean. Once that evaporates, puncture the vial. You can push in the blood. Now what you need to remember here is that this vial was filled with argon gas and now we're adding more volume into that. So once you inject the blood, you can always just pull the needle up a little bit and then pull a little bit of air out of the vial into your syringe so that you're not building up a lot of pressure inside of the reaction vial because this is blood and sometimes if you get too much pressure in there it can squirt a little bit at you just when it when you're taking the needle out and you really don't want any of that. So now my needle is capped. This could just go directly into a cold sharps container. Okay, so we're back in our hot lab now. And this reaction vial, I didn't show it in the last segment, but I should have showing where you just want to invert this gently a couple of times to make sure that all the contents have a chance to mix and that that stannous ion is gonna be able to diffuse into you know, evenly into all of the red blood cells. You don't want to do that too vigorously or you might damage the red blood cells just gently inverting a couple of times. We're almost up to our five minutes. I'm going to start preparing my supplies out of the UltraTag kit, which comes in all these little pieces. It's a little tricky sometimes. They have, it will come with everything you need. It's just putting it together in the right way. So we have some needles and our syringe one and syringe two. These needles don't screw on to the syringes, they just push on. So that's a little bit tricky. And also, the stick to push that is not attached in there. So when you're putting this in, you need to be careful that you're, when you're trying to hook all these things up, to make sure that you're not accidentally hitting the plunger and pushing it down, because that will be inadvertently spilling some of the contents of these syringes and you don't want to do that. They're all measured out precisely for the, the amount that they will need. So what I do before I put in the pusher stick is I get my needle onto there, get a good secure connection there, and I actually go ahead and just loosen that so that it's it comes off easily and I'm not having to apply a lot of force and accidentally hitting the plunger and spilling the contents while I'm doing that. 
Another trick that I've learned is that you don't actually need to twist this in order to push the contents in. I had one time where I was trying to twist it and accidentally spilled some of that. So by just setting it in there, I can push it and then once it's all the way down, I can twist it to be able to pull the air back out. So our five minutes is up. I've got that syringe ready to go. In the reaction vial again. Like I said, that's loose, so it comes off easily. Puncture the vial, push that down. Once the contents are in there, now I can turn the syringe, pull the needle back up a little bit, and pull out that extra air to make up for the volume that I've just injected into there. And we're not going to have any buildup of the pressure, so it's not going to accidentally splash some blood back on me. Needles there, gently invert the contents of syringe one, four to five times. The same thing now with syringe two. Put the needle onto the syringe. Going to just pop the cap so that it's loose. Pusher stick is ready. Puncture the vial. Inject the contents of syringe two. Twist it. Pull the needle up just a tad. Pull the extra air out. And invert the vial a few times. And it is still not radioactive at this point. Okay, so this is still not radioactive yet, but now we're going to add our actual radiation into this. So we want to make sure that we have sufficient shielding to be able to handle that. This is my dose. I've already checked it on the label from the pharmacy to make sure that it is just sodium protectinate. We're not injecting any other radiopharmaceutical in there. And I've also assayed the syringe as a preliminary assay to find out how much I'm starting with. Normally, the sites will order between 25 and 40 millicuries to work with this. When you drop back out, you're not going to get that full amount. So the amount when you assay it first is just to start and see what you're working with. That's not what you're going to write down on the patient's sticker. You will write that down later after you drop the completed blood product and then see how much you're actually going to inject with them. So this is ready to be in the shielding. I have my dose going to quickly puncture the vial, inject the radio pharmaceutical, pull the needle back up, pull out just a little bit, pull out the air to make up from what I injected. We don't want to build up the pressure. Cap the needle, get that out of the way. And then you will want to gently, again, invert that plug. And now it needs to sit there incubating for 20 minutes every 10 minutes or so, you might want to come back, just swirl it, mix it a little bit. Again, nothing vigorous because you don't want to damage the blood cells that are in there. Okay, so this has been incubating for 20 minutes, which just allows sufficient time for the protectinate to diffuse and bind to that stannous ion that's inside the red blood cells. It's ready to go. So now we're going to be drying up the final product. Remember, this is radioactive, so we want to maintain adequate shielding throughout. But we're going to be drying up that final blood product that we're going to use to reinject into the patient. If we were doing this on a real patient, the whole time throughout the process, we would have had labels and stickers with the patient's ID number, name, just to make sure that we're giving him his own blood, him or her his own blood back. If you're only doing one patient at a time, then, then that's easy to keep track. If not, though, you, it's always a good idea to have sti identifying stickers and labels on, on everything that you use, especially when you're working with, with blood products. Another thing to remember when we draw this out is that we started out with three cc's of the patient's blood, but in addition to that, we've added the contents of syringe one, we've added the contents of syringe two, we've added the protectinate dose. So there's a lot more volume in there now than what we originally started with. So you're going to need a larger syringe than a 3cc syringe. 
I will usually you'll need a, a five or six cc syringe to be able to draw that out. So that's ready to go there. I'm going to just quickly take the cap off of that, clean it. Remember time distance shielding. You want to be everything really quick, as quick as you can on that. But on some of this, you, it takes some time. You, you are going to get some dose from this. You're ready, you will puncture the vial, but you don't want to go too far in because you need to be able to get the, the patient's dose. And then for the illustration's sake on this, we didn't use real protectinitate, but you'll want to have the needle out and draw as much, get as much of this out as you can. And you want to be as, as quick as you can, but you, you got to be thorough as well. So at that point, we'll be back in. Need to recap the needle. So we've got the dose drawn up. It's shielded. I was just going to put it into the tackle box there, and so I can take it over to the dose calibrator. And that's what we're going to do is assay the dose. This is the actual number that we are going to write down on the patient's sticker as far as the dose that they're getting. And it's also a good check for me to make sure that I've got enough of the blood out to get a good study. I know if I started, for example, with 35 millicuries when I first assayed my dose, some of that is going to decay. Some of that is going to stay in the reaction vial of the amount that I just cannot get out. So if I get anywhere, you know, 20, 28, 27 millicuries would be a good enough amount to be able to know that I got sufficient blood out of there to get a good study and we got a, we got a good enough tag on that to be able to work. So at this point, the dose has been assayed. I would take it over and double check everything with the stickers, double check again just because it's blood, check the bracelet again, and then they can get their injection. It's ready to go. That's how you do an ultra tag kit.